It's been a minute, uh, but welcome back. Um, I decided that in my <clears throat> goal to set up my calendar for March, I would show you how we do that. So I have uh, three kind of planners type things here. Um, one is new to my system this year. It wasn't in my setup video or my uh, planner system video at the beginning of the year, but <clears throat> I have learned that it has been very helpful in um, reaching a couple goals that I have. So I will take a minute and um, just explain what each of these are and then get into how I set it up, what I use, and then I'll go ahead and set that up and uh, show you some of the finished products. So first up, um, before we get into it, if you uh, are new here, welcome. Um, I do planner and skincare videos and <clears throat> try to post new every week. So uh, thanks for joining. Um, if you do like what you see, please go ahead and uh, subscribe or hit the like button and uh, share with your other planner friends if you feel like this has been helpful for you. So the, up first, uh, there's a couple setup videos for this guy. Um, it's my Pocket uh, A7 Pocket Lux Moterm Planner. It's an everyday carry on the go. It stays in my purse. Um, I revamped it from last year. Um, I was in a pink Moterm for a couple of years and uh, switched over to the gray and slimmed it down a bit. Uh, from how it used to be set up, just based on what was I using, what was I not, and uh, really like this so far. So that's always with me. This one uh, is always on my desk, folded to the day of the week, um, the week or the month. So we'll see uh, if you can see there, we have a this month, this week, um, journal, which I'm not, I don't know, I don't use the journal in this as much as I used to and then next month. So this is um, every, it's it's here, I'll just show. So like every week is just out you know, and it's out there and it's you know on display um, and it's easy to flip to next month, next week. Um, but it's just the catch all. Um, it's basically become a weekly to do's and um, or done. <laughs> Mark what's happened. So this is always on my desk. I never take this thing around with me. The whole year is in it and it's pretty heavy, but it stays on my desk. And then this one, this is newer because it is only a calendar and it's huge. I mean, it's, I don't know, uh, eight and a half by 11. So just regular letter size. Um, but this really helps to kind of pre-plan and so I'll show here. What I did is I set up um, for the year in advance. So we have some marked days. Now that it's we're approaching March, it makes <clears throat> a little more sense that it's starting to be filled out. But like if I'm looking ahead. As things pop up, I enter them in. But one thing I try to focus on is marking where every 12 weeks land throughout the year because I'm trying to take a little more time off. I did not take time off in 2020, 2021. Um, I was a contractor, I didn't have pay time off. Uh, so that made it challenging. Um, and I was also, you know, caring for my mom. Uh, my husband and I shared that role and um, that was very time consuming. So it's very easy to quickly get burned out and we're trying to avoid that this year um, and try to mitigate that as much as possible. So I marked, I had a goal for every 12 weeks to try and take either a long weekend or a day off 
Um, so I marked either the 12 weeks with the gray tabs. I marked potential PTO daytime off with like the, the burnt orange tabs. And I marked um, some other like bank holidays, like Memorial Day in May, the pink tab. And so just trying to kind of plan to know that I have some built-in time off and there's some, some buffer, um, you know, just, it helps me. It helps to know that I'll be able to build in some breaks here and there. Also learned from last year, um, since my mom's stroke, I, we do take her to all of her appointments or had been taking her to all of her appointments. And there's, there was a lot like what was a simple could be a simple crown fix ended up being five or six trips back to the dentist um with how much work was needed so things like that so in august when there isn't any like built-in paid time off uh i mean uh, bank holidays and it's a really long month uh it tends to get busy at work during these times because they're both you know 31 days long, July and August back to back. I'm just trying to, for example, put in like just July and August be no appointment days. Um, and so this helps, it helps me plan for the months ahead. So doing that all up front was really helpful because when I go to plan in, like for example, today I'm gonna plan for March and make sure all the cal calendars sync. Um, but it helps to know that I started my year off with a goal and I just put in some tentative, tentative dates that, okay, maybe I can take a day off here or take a day off there. Um, or maybe March can be a little bit of a heavier appointment month if I'm taking some time off in April, things like that. So a bit wordy, but <laughs> this is how I use this one. It's really helped. Um, but one thing is I don't typically go in unless I feel like it and update this one. This was at the start of the year, start of the month, if I'm trying to move things around. And that is another thing I wanted to point out was that everything is on these um, cloth and paper uh, page flags. So for example, oops, <laughs> lost it. But um, a lot of cloth and paper page flags help to write it down with uh, a sharpie and then um, you can just move it around so here we have another one but um, I can just take any of these and move them um, until they're more solidified which is why I really like using that so again this is totally new for me this year it's working really well um, I like it a lot and um, this is this is March so far. So um, once I have kind of an idea of what is going to stick for the month, I'll highlight it. And then I know like the week of the 14th is going to be really heavy. <laughs> there's there's a lot going on that week. So it helps me to know um, how to plan in any self care. Um, what kind of boundaries need to be drawn that week, um, things like that. So uh, <laughs> what I'll do is I'll take a look at this calendar and I'll sync it up with the one that stays on my desk. Um, because again, I write, I did this in advance and um, let's do the next one. I do this sometimes as the week is happening. So I'm going to make sure everything on here is in this one and then everything in this one is in this one because this is always in my purse. So if I'm out, need to make an appointment, um, I'll reference it um, <clears throat> and plan this way. And also whatever's in my pocket, I want to make sure is in this calendar. So these two need to be identical because this is always with me on the go. This is always at my desk. And whether I decide to or not depends on if I update this one. So that is an explanation for how the calendars um, stay updated. I also have a calendar 
on the wall behind me. That helps because uh, my husband can see it and we can plan when things are happening uh, based off the calendar uh, on the wall. And uh, that's it. So I tend to, it can be very easy to forget that things are set or scheduled or upcoming. When are they? When are they happening? And um, maybe it's just, you know, kind of the dust settling from 2020 and 2021. <laughs> so forget it's 2022. But it's it's been so hectic and there was so much going on that there were there were plenty of times I kind of forgot what was happening and that is not like me. But uh, so this has kind of been built into something that I know works. Um, is it a little repetitive? Kind of, but not really. It's just these two staying in sync is all. And I like to try and set it up because around a week or two left of the month, you know, for example, in February, I've kind of solidified what is happening in March, what's going to happen in March. So it's not, um, not too hard to get that set up. Um, now, so I figured I would take you along for the ride. So with that, um, I'm going to go ahead and, and sync everything up and then I'll catch you back later.
Okay, so uh, now we're back. Uh, we have this set up for March. It does sync with my desktop calendar. So that's absolutely important. But now when I'm out and about uh, or need to make appointments, I have everything set that I need. So this is how I set up typically a month. Uh, I hope this helps you. It definitely took some trial and error, but I really like the way the system works for me. So I tend to color code it. So if I have to have an appointment out of the house, um, a reminder if something is virtual. Um, and for work, we release we release things the last Monday of every month, um, efforts that I lead, and it tends to be very, it can be very, very hectic, and that day is busy with training sessions and stuff like that. So I write it really big. That's the usually the only work thing I tend to put in, or like a work happy hour because... Um, which I'll add it uh, because I, I don't want to miss it. Um, but I cannot plan things on release day or the week of. I try to be very um, protective of that time. So with this release day, um, there's I'm going to need to take PTO 14th and 18th. So that's bookending this week for appointments. So I'm reminding myself to, like, these might be longer work days. This week will be very, very full. Because even though I'm taking paid time off on these days, the work still needs to get done. So the, this week will probably be a bit longer. Um, so I'll probably write in some self-care here on the 12th and the 13th. Um, but anyway, Wednesdays, um, my husband and I try to have date night, we get out of the house, we do something, break up the week a bit. Um, so that's why I put a little heart there. <laughs> but um, so just I'm blocking this out. So I try not to make appointments there. I know it's going to be a very heavy week. Um, the 28th is going to be a very big day. Um, and uh, my little niece is turning four on the 30th. I'd really like to make a trip up to visit. Um, also needs to be timed with my uncle might be visiting. I still don't know when that is. So I put a couple of things here on the side that might still get planned. So if it comes up or if I'm checking for things to try and follow up on days to understand when that might happen, it'll help me. And it helps to know that, okay, these need to fit in, but I do need to still be protective and mindful of this time. So that's, that's, uh, that's the setup. That's going into March. Um, and you know, we'll see, I'll probably, I won't make appointments on this weekend because that's going to be a very heavy week. So it just helps me to also, um, if we remember my goals, I, I probably link goals in every video, but I'll link that up at the top. Um, but you know, trying to set boundaries and part of that is being protective of time. We don't get it back and uh, we don't want to burn out. So um, there we have it. Um, that's that's the pocket. Um, this stays with me. I now know it's synced with my desktop calendar and um, there we have it. So I hope this was helpful to you. Um, let me know in the comments below um, if you found it helpful or if you have any questions, I'd be more than happy to help um, give suggestions or recommendations, but, um, that will do it for now all. So again, thanks for joining and, uh, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.